Hi, my name is Denver Riddle of Color Grading Central, and in this video tutorial, I'll be covering how to read scopes as they can be a very powerful tool and in some cases essential in color grading. The new scopes in Final Cut Pro 10 are much improved over previous versions of Final Cut and introduce some really cool new features. The scopes we'll be covering are the Waveform, RGB Parade, Histogram, and Vector Scope. So let's dive right in. The first scope I'll be talking about is the Waveform Monitor, which is used to evaluate the brightness or exposure of an image. You'll notice on the waveform, as well as on other scopes, that there's this weird stuff called the trace, and it's a representation of the measurement of the pixels in the image. Now, the way that the waveform monitor is read is from left to right corresponding to the actual image. And for convenience, I've superimposed the image on top of the waveform monitor so you can more easily see this. Exposure is then read from top to bottom with the shadows at the bottom the midtones in the middle, and the highlights at the top. Let's evaluate some images with the waveform monitor. In this example, because the trace is gathered all at the bottom in the shadows, we can see that the image is underexposed. And in the next example, the trace is gathered all at the top in the highlights, indicating that the image is overexposed. Moving on to the RGB parade, you'll notice it looks similar to the waveform monitor, other than the exposure readings are broken out into the individual channels of red, green, and blue. The RGB parade scope is useful in evaluating and correcting color balance or shots with a color cast or dominant color. This is how it works. If you add red, green, and blue in equal amounts, we get white at 100%, gray at 50%, and black near 0%. If they're added together unequally, then we get a color. But unless we're going for a stylized look, we want our blacks to be black in the shadows and our whites to be white in the highlights. When this is the case, we have a color correct image. Let's look at some examples. The first image is balanced correctly with the shadows black and the highlights white. This one shows the red channel elevated, giving the image a strong red color cast or dominant red color. The next one shows the blue channel elevated, giving the image a blue color cast. And lastly, this example shows the green channel elevated in the shadows, making them green, and suppressed in the highlights, making them magenta. We'll learn later how to use the RGB scope to perform color corrections on the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Our next scope is the histogram. It's useful in evaluating exposure and particularly useful in ensuring broadcast legality, or in other words, keeping the exposure within the limits safe for broadcast. It's a little less intuitive to read, but how it works is straightforward. We read the exposure from left to right, with the shadows on the left, the midtones in the middle, and the highlights on the right. Then the trace is calculated by the sum of the pixels added on top of each other at each exposure level. Let's look at some examples. Our first example is a properly exposed image, and we can tell this by a pretty even distribution of the trace across the histogram. The next example is of an image that's underexposed as indicated by the trace being collected to the left of the histogram in the shadows area. Our last example shows overexposure by the trace being gathered to the right, and in this case, exceeding 100 IRE, and anything above this level is illegal or not safe for broadcast. With the histogram, we can quickly identify unsafe levels of exposure. Our last scope, the vector scope, can seem intimidating at first glance, but it's really useful in evaluating color and saturation based on the color wheel. Here is the color wheel superimposed on top of it so that it's easier to understand. Colors that are farther from the center are more saturated or intense. Colors that are closer to the center are more dull. Now I'm going to point out a couple key features of the vector scope. The first is this line called the flush line. It's useful in color correcting skin tones as this is where skin tones should lie on the color wheel or vector scope. Next, the vector scope is useful in ensuring broadcast legality of chroma or color levels. These lines have been drawn for convenience and trace that stays within these lines is broadcast safe. Any trace that goes outside of these lines is too saturated and not safe for broadcast. Let's evaluate some examples. A nice feature of Final Cut Pro 10 scopes 
is that the trace is colored, thus making it easier to identify the colors from the image on the scopes themselves. This example shows a really strong red from the heart suit, and we can even see the blue trace from the blue veins on the heart. In the next example, we can see yellow from the dinosaur in the background. And in this last example, we can see the blue from the sky as indicated by the blue trace. I hope that this tutorial has been helpful in helping you to better understand the scopes. It's important that we've laid the foundation of the interface and how to read the scopes so next we can begin color correcting.